Hello, welcome to the Chapter 5 Summary Worksheet for Scott Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. So these are just some problems from Chapter 5. It was a fairly short chapter, so um, we just have a handful of problems here. And we start off with expected value, and then we'll move on to binomial probability distributions. But the first problem is an expected value from gambling. We have a roulette wheel, and it's just a, it's just a wheel that you spin around, and there's a, a channel for the ball to spin around on, and eventually it lands in one of the slots. And it turns out that there are 40 slots, 19 are red, 19 are black, and 2 are green. All right. And if you place a $1 bet, on red and when, if it comes up red, you get two dollars. But that's one of those is sort of your original dollar, right? And if it doesn't come up red, then they keep the one dollar, right? And so the question is, what is the expected value of a one dollar bet on red? All right. So there's two outcomes. I can win or I can lose. That's red or not red. And if I do win, it's a net positive of one dollar, right? They give me two, but I put one down, so one of them's already sort of mine. So it's a that's a value of plus one. If I lose, they keep my dollar, so it's a value of negative one. The probabilities are pretty easy to figure out because there's 19 red slots on a four to total of 40, so that's the probability of um, getting a red 19 out of 40. Probability of getting a non-red is the remaining 21 non-reds over 40. Again, notice these probabilities add up to 1. And then the formula, which is from chapter 5.1, looks like this. The expected value is equal to the sum of the x's times the p of x's. Right. This part right here is just the probability distribution. Okay, so I take x times p of x, I get 19 out of 40. x times p of x, I get negative 21 over 40. And when I add them up, that's the summation, I add them up, I get negative 0.05. So the expected value is negative 5 cents, meaning if you play this game over and over and over, you can expect, on average, to lose a nickel per game, as long as you stay within the $1 betting arena. Um, here's a similar example for expected value. It's a life insurance policy, which is also a type of gambling. Only this time, uh, you are the seller. You are you're selling life insurance, and you charge a 50-year-old man $75 for a one-year, $100,000 policy. What that means is, if he dies in the course of one year from buying it, you have to pay out his estate $100,000. Now you get to keep the 75, but that's a small um, consolation to you, the, the company person. Um, and on the other hand, if that person lives through the course of the next year, you get to keep the 75, and that's the end of it. And based on historical data, relative frequency approximation, the average 50-year-old man has a 0.9997 probability of surviving through the year. So when we make our... Um, probability distribution table, our expected value table. We have two outcomes. Uh, the person you sold it to lives, the person you sold it to dies. Right? And the profit, if he lives, is 75. You get to keep the 75 that he gave you. But what, what happens if, if he dies is you have to pay out the 100,000. But the, the thing is, you don't actually, so you'd think negative 100,000, but you did get to keep that 75. So we're not even going to, so we're going to, so we're going to count that against the losses. So that the loss is actually just negative um, $99,925. And then the probability, the probability that he lives is given in the problem, 0.9997. So the probability that he dies is 1. Minus 0 0.9997, 0 0.003. And again, we're going to take the sum, whoops, the expected value equals the sum of the x times p of x. So we go x times p of x 
gives you 74.9775x times p of x, negative 29.9775. Okay, and then we add them up. That's the summation part, right? When you add them up, you get $45, or 45. So the expected value to you as the company person is 45, right? That means on average, if you sell a whole bunch of these, you can expect to make $45 per policy. What is the break-even price? Right, so that's B. What is the break-even price for such a policy? In other words, what price should you charge to produce an expected profit of zero? Well, if you look at it this way, you charged 75, right? And you expect to keep 45. So you charge, you took in 75, you expect to keep 45. So the break-even price is just that difference, 75 minus 45, which is $30. Right, so you can expect if you charge for $30 that um, there will be no profit, no loss, right, in the expected value sense. And you can check that answer easily by sticking 30 in for the um, value, right, for the, for the cost of the policy. So if he lives, you make 30 bucks as the company. If he dies... You lose, you know, you take 100,000 minus 30, you get negative, negative 99,970. The probabilities are the same, so x times p of x gives you that third column. x times p of x gives you this column. And they're the same. Well, one's a negative, important negative. So your expected value is zero, and the break-even price is indeed $30. All right, let's turn the page to get to some binomial probability distribution. So in this case, I have the Jordan Sports Equipment Company. They find that 10% of the population, the general population, is left-handed. So we're going to use that information, and we're either going to use the binomial table or the formula, which is found at the bottom of this page down here, to answer the following questions. So. If 20 people are randomly selected, find the probability that exactly three of them are left-handed. So this 20 is n, right? 20 trials, 20 people. What's the probability that exactly three, or x? But now I just need the p. What's the probability of a single success, or a single person being left-handed? That's the 10%. So it equals 0 0.10. So I take that information to the tables, n equals 20, x equals 3, p equals 0.1. And let's see. n equals 20, p equals 0.1, and x equals 3. So 0 0.190, following that row and that column. All right, nice and easy. So that's this answer right here. Right. If eight people are randomly selected, find the probability at least one of them is left-handed. Right. So we need to go to n equals eight, and I'm looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to one. So I'm gonna scroll all the way back here. 15, 10, nine, eight, there we go n equals 8, p, the probability of a single lefty, is still 0 0.10. So at least 1 means 1 or more. So it's the sum of these probabilities. So I'm adding all these probabilities up, where I count the stars as 0. But notice, at least 1 is, is everything except 0. So I could also just take the 0.43 and subtract that from 1. That should give me the same answer, because these things all add up to 1. Um, one way or the other. So the idea is you can add up all those numbers I just showed you, and you get 0.57. Or you can take 1 minus the probability of 0, the 0 0.430, and you get the same answer, 0 0.570. Now these two methods won't always necessarily agree, only because sometimes these starred values add up to something uh, meaningful. Okay. So, back to the worksheet. Suppose 15 people walk into your golf shop. 
would four lefties be considered an unusually large number in a group of 15? Well, let's face it, if this case, if n equals 15, and the probability of getting a single lefty is 0.1, then you'd expect about 1.5 lefties. Right, 1.5 lefties. And so the question is, if four, if four of them are lefties, is that an unusually large number? And um, the way we check that, we say, all right, the probability of x being greater than or equal to four, we want to compare that to 0 0.05. And if that number is less than 0 0.05, then four is an unusually large number. Okay, so I have 15 is n p is 0.1, and I'm looking for 4 or more. n equals 15, p is 0.1, and I want 4 or more. So I need to add up all of these. And when you do that, you get 0 0.055. So that's a pretty close call, 0.055 is close to 0.05, but it is actually bigger. So what that means is that four lefties is not quite an unusually high number. What about five lefties? Is that an unusually high number? Well, we have to go back to the same table. In fact, it's almost the same process. When you're sitting doing four and more, I'm going to do five or more. When you do that, 0 0.010 plus 0 0.002 for probability of 0 0.012. So the probability of getting five or more is 0 0.012. That is smaller than 0 0.05. So yes, five lefties would certainly be considered an unusually large number. Right. So what if you have 22 people? All right, so now n is 22, and I specifically use 22 in this example because 22 is not in our table, right? You can't always use the table. Right? It stops at 20. So n equals 22, we're out of luck. But we can also be out of luck if, say, p was 0.83, right? So the table is, is limited use. So every once in a while, you might have to use the formula. So that's what we have to do here. What is the probability exactly two of them are left-handed? Um, so what we're looking for, the probability that x equals 2 when n is 22 and p equals 0 0.10. So that formula, and again, it's down here. There's uh, n factorial over n minus x factorial, x factorial times p to the x times q to the n minus x. So here is n factorial, right? Here's n minus x factorial. There's x factorial. p to the x, q, remember p and q always add up to 1, to the n minus x. So we're just going to worry about this fraction with the factorial part. So the 22 factorial looks like 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times 18. Times, but that's just 22 times 21 times 20 factorial. And the nice thing about that is that this cancels with that one. right? So again, you'll always get a lot of cancellation with these problems. And the 2 will cancel with that 22 and make 11. So I just have 11 times 21 over 1, 231. So this thing is just 231, right? And so my probability is 231 p to the x times q to the n minus x. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 0.281. Right, and again, software, actually graphing calculators, you can just fill in the values of P, Q, or just P and X and N, and it'll spit those answers right out. So now, suppose we have 60. Well, that's definitely not in one of the tables, right? That's way too big. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with the mean and standard deviation. What is the mean and standard deviation for the number of lefties in randomly selected groups of 60? Look, if n is 60 and p is 10%, then you'd expect in groups of 60 the average number of lefties would be 6. And in fact, the formula bears that out. n times p is 60 times 0 0.10. So there's the mean, 6. 
The standard deviation given in chapter uh, 5.3 is not as easy or as obvious to recognize. But it's the square root of n times p times q. There's n. There's p. There's q. Remember, they always add up to 1. Take the square root, and you have 2.3. So now I have a mean and a standard deviation. I can start asking questions about unusual. You know, what is unusual? When are, when are things weird? So, so we expect six. In a group of 60, we expect six lefties, or about six lefties. And we ask ourselves, would nine be an unusually large, or would, be, would that be an unusual number of left-handed people? Right? Is nine unusual? Certainly more than we expect. So here we have... The z score is given by x minus mu over sigma. I have mu up here. I have sigma right there. So I've got everything I need. And um, so this is just 9. So I'm looking for x is 9. 9 minus 6 over 2.3 is 1.3. And that is between negative 2 and 2. So that 9 is not an unusual number of lefties. If you wanted to use software and see if that's an unusually large number, you'd have to get the probability that x was greater than or equal to 9 when n is 60 and p is 0 0.10. And again, that's not going to be in one of the tables. And you get a value of 0.14. Since that value is bigger than 0 0.05, it means that 9 is not an unusually large number of successes or an unusually large number of lefties. And again, we're expecting 6 lefties, what about 12? Would 12 be considered an unusual number of lefties? Well again we can use the same z-score method. We now x is 12. 12 minus 6 over 2.3 is 2.61. That is bigger than 2. So that makes 12 an unusual number of lefties. And you can also do the actual binomial probability. The probability of getting 12 or more using software, or your TI calculator, or any calculator that has these kind of abilities, is 0.015. Right. And 0.015 is smaller than 0.05. Right, so the probability of 12 or more is less than 0.05. That makes 12 unusually large. All right, so we have a couple of ways of determining whether a result is unusual. We can count, you know, standard deviations. Is it more than two standard deviations from the mean? If so, then that is unusual. But then we can also get unusually large and unusually small by finding the probabilities of getting as many and more or as many as less um, than the actual value of x. So that wraps up Chapter 5 all the way around. Look forward to seeing you in Chapter 6. Bye now.